Greetings and welcome to the channel. My name is Dan and in this video we'll be talking about how we figured out the shape of the earth over 2000 years ago and how science and knowledge has been refined all the way up until the modern day using evidence we've compiled for thousands of years through the development of philosophy, maths and science since evolving from a hunter-gatherer species to settled societies and cultures through time which has also been a process of gradually turning belief into actual measurable facts and knowledge. I'll also be talking about why some people believe that the Earth is flat surrounded by an ice wall covered with a dome, and where the more modern movement originated from. Now let's get into the video. Today we know and can easily prove in many ways that the shape of the Earth is a globe, and it is massive. The circumference around the equator measuring around 25,000 miles or 40,000 kilometers. To visualize its scale, the diameter of Earth is about 12,742 kilometers. So with an average human measuring around 1.65 meters tall, you would have to stack approximately 7,722,000 people to reach the height of Earth in a straight line from pole to pole. So next time you look at a globe or a ball, estimate its height, divide it by 7.7 .7 million, and that's the approximate scale of a human if the Earth was the size of the sphere you conducted the estimate on. To reach around the 40,000 kilometer circumference of the Earth, it would take approximately 24,242,000 people lying down from head to toe. The creatures that live on Earth are so tiny in comparison to the Earth that to even the largest or tallest land animals, and even most birds, the ground around them appears to be a flat plane that stretches into the distance. Our organic senses evolved for perception and survival and are not accurate measuring tools. But with the development of human intelligence, more complex societies and cultures started to form, where philosophical and mathematical ideas started to be born, which was only really made possible after we evolved from a hunter-gatherer species to a point when a cultural society became self-sufficient and dense enough that living was no longer just about survival, giving time for some people to start pursuing new ideas and concepts a practice which would eventually turn into philosophy, maths, science, and many other fields. The Sumerians were the first real identified culture which had a complex society allowing the basis of many fields of expertise to be born between around 4000 and 2000 BC. They're attributed with inventing so many things that we still do thousands of years later, and it's argued amongst scholars still today what shape the Sumerians thought the earth was. Their beliefs about the heavens could be a video on its own, but what I think matters in the context of this topic is that we've never found any experiments or techniques to work out what shape the earth was in their writings, mainly just mythological ideas about the earth and the heavens. Even in ancient Egyptian and Mesopotamian records, they believed the world was a disk in the ocean with the heavens arching above it. An Iraqi tablet dated to 1000 BC also shows Babylon at the center of a flat disk. It wasn't until around 550 BC when the ancient Greek philosopher Pythagoras observed the spherical nature of the other planets and posited the Earth also possesses a spherical shape. Then, nearly 100 years later, in around 463 BC, a philosopher named Anaxagoras noted the Earth's shadow on the Moon during a lunar eclipse had a curve to it. This was followed up another 100 years later by the great philosopher Aristotle, when in about 350 BC, he declared that the Earth was a sphere based on observations he made about which constellations you could see in the sky as you traveled further and further away from the equator, as well as noting the curve of lunar eclipses. Then, over another century later, about 240 BC, it was Eratosthenes who finally developed the first scientific technique to figure out the circumference of the Earth using the measurements of shadows and their angles relative to the Sun in different locations taken at noon of the summer equinox. So around 550 BC was when the first positive idea of the Earth being a sphere was, and around 240 BC was when the first method of successfully measuring the approximate circumference of the Earth was conducted. That's around 310 years it took from the idea first being suggested to the first method to be thought up to actually measure the idea that the Earth was round. Which is the same equivalent of someone first positing an idea in the year 1700 and then someone coming up with the first experiment to measure and prove that idea today a little over 300 years later which just shows how slow science was to find its feet in those early days. 
Even back then, over 2,000 years ago, it was generally accepted that the Earth was round or spherical in shape. And by the time the Roman writer Pliny the Elder was writing the first part of his natural history around 77 AD, the fact that the Earth is a sphere was treated as common knowledge, as he states, quote, We all agree on the Earth's shape, for surely we always speak of the round ball of the Earth. Even through the Middle Ages, the Earth was depicted and described generally as an orb, Round diagrams of the Earth were included in the works of Isidore Seville. Meanwhile, a map that was often circulated with the work of the 5th century writer Macrobius showed the climate zones of Earth divided into northern and southern hemispheres. Around the year 723 to 725, the monk Bede taught his students that the reason why the same days are of unequal length is the roundness of the Earth for not without reason it is called the orb of the world on the pages of holy scripture and ordinary literature. It is, in fact, a sphere set in the middle of the whole universe. It is not merely circular like a shield or spread out like a wheel, but resembles more a ball, being equally round in all directions. The Earth being depicted as round wasn't just limited to early fields of natural history and science, but also in medieval art. For example, many depictions of God the Creator show him holding a compass used to draw round objects. Although early thinkers knew that the Earth was spherical, they couldn't understand why. For example, Pliny struggled to understand how people who lived in the Southern Hemisphere didn't fall off the Earth, and Bede believed that nobody lived in the Southern Hemisphere. It wasn't until we discovered the theory of gravity which allowed us to start properly understanding why the Earth, planets, moons and stars are spherical that on an astronomical body like the Earth, gravity pulls everything towards the centre of mass, which is the middle of the Earth. That's why you can go anywhere on Earth's surface, and up just means away from the centre of the Earth, and down means towards the centre of the Earth. So nobody is upside down like I hear coming from communities that either don't trust science or modernism, or prescribe to an ancient long disproven belief like the Flat Earth, for example. Although there are still some people today that believe in a Flat Earth, the theory of a flat Earth seems to first appear in a book by Samuel Rowbottom called Zetetic Astronomy, Earth Not a Globe, released under the pseudonym Parallax. His ideas were first published as a 16-page pamphlet in 1849, but later expanded into a book in 1865. Of course, he didn't conduct any actual repeatable experiments attempting to prove his idea scientifically. Rowbottom's method, which he called Zetetic Astronomy, models the Earth as a flat disk centred at the North Pole and bounded along its perimeter by a wall of ice, with the Sun and Moon, planets and stars moving only several thousand miles above the surface of the Earth. The theory gained a bit of following amongst some, then died down a bit in the early 1900s, but then was revived in 1956 as the Flat Earth Society, which is still alive today. The Zetetic Astronomy model is remarkably similar to what I hear many Flat Earth believers describe the Earth being like today, and because of the internet and social media, there appears to be a new wave of Flat Earth believers in recent times. There have even been documentaries made trying to convince people that the Earth is flat. Although every actual scientific experiment that I've seen a Flat Earth believer conduct has only proven that the Earth does have a curve and it does rotate like we already know. That's probably why they mostly stay away from actual science. There's, we don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light uh, way above your head. Interesting. What we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift, a 15 degree per hour drift. Now, <laughs> obviously we were taken aback by that. Wow. That's kind of a, a problem. <laughs> Every experiment we've ever repeated shows the Earth to be a rotating globe. Some of my favourite examples which don't even need science to see that the Earth is a globe that rotates are Firstly, that the Moon appears at different angles when viewed from the Northern Hemisphere, the Equator and the Southern Hemisphere, which would only be that way on a globe. Same with long exposure star trails at different latitudes, which would only appear this way on a rotating globe. One that I've seen with my own eyes many times is satellites disappearing into Earth's shadow. You can only see satellites if they're reflecting the sun's light. So after the sun sets, if you watch an orbiting satellite travelling in the opposite direction from the sun, there will be a point where you can see it disappear into Earth's shadow. 
clearly showing that the Sun from the perspective of the satellite has disappeared over the curve of the Earth, which is literally just what a sunset is from a viewer's perspective anyway. And if the satellites are heading towards the Sun, you may be able to see them emerging from Earth's shadow. Even when watching planes at high altitudes from the ground, just before the sun sets from the plane's perspective, you can see from the ground the sun reflecting off the underside of the plane and illuminating the underside of the contrails very clearly, showing that sun's light is coming from underneath the horizontal angle of the plane, which would only happen if the sun was setting around the curve of a spherical body. There's also the abundance of photos and videos of the Earth from various locations in space for over half a century now since we've developed the ability to take off and leave the Earth's atmosphere. All the scientific measurements and experiments we've conducted show the Earth is a globe rotating in space orbiting around the Sun. And as I explained towards the beginning of this video, our senses aren't measuring tools. They evolved for perception and survival of our environment. You can't expect to organically perceive something like the size or the shape of the Earth when the average person is nearly 8 million times shorter than its diameter and 24 million times shorter than its circumference is in length. We needed to actually come up with these measuring techniques and scientific tools over time to measure and gauge something so huge compared to us. And all the evidence we've collected over many generations shows that the Earth is the globe that we figured out it was over 2,000 years ago. With the accelerating development of science and knowledge in recent centuries, we've gained such an amazing understanding of reality and the universe we live in. We're still discovering and figuring new things out to this day, and it doesn't seem to be slowing down. We're now at the stage where we've explored other planets in our solar system. We have telescopes in space, where we've been able to explore the universe in ways that we just can't do within Earth's atmosphere. We've taken so many pictures of the Earth from many angles and distances, showing clearly that it's the globe we knew it was all along. The International Space Station live streams its view of Earth and is visible with the naked eye from the surface of Earth. We've been to the Moon, put rovers on Mars to explore and conduct scientific experiments. We've invented computers, cameras, mobile phones, the internet, all the crazy technology you can think of, and that's all thanks to the continued development of science. Without that, we would likely still be living similar to what we were sometime in the Middle Ages. Conclusion, Earth is a globe. You just let it hit. And it breaks a building. And that's the whole idea of wrecking. I'm going to release this object, and I hope I will be able to do it at zero speed. So that when it comes back, it may touch my chin, but it may not crush my chin. I want you to be extremely quiet because this is no joke. If I don't succeed in giving it zero speed, then this will be my last lecture. <laughs> I will close my eyes. I don't want to see this. So please be very quiet. I almost didn't sleep all night. Three, two, one, zero. <laughs> Physics works and I'm still alive. Yes, science! So what do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Well, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like, share the video with a flat earther, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care of yourselves out there. <laughs>